Are you stuck trying to choose a network engineering career path? Maybe you're overwhelmed by all the different options from routing to security to wireless or even cloud, and you're not sure which one actually leads to the highest paying jobs. Or maybe you're worried about picking the wrong field and wasting months studying for the wrong certification that won't even matter in the future. Well, this video is going to be your roadmap. I'm going to give you a simple plan that will help you break through analysis paralysis and figure out exactly where to start. So whether you want to get into enterprise networking, data center, security, or cloud networking. Now, most people think they need a perfect plan before getting started. They spend months trying to find the right certification or the best path. But let me tell you a secret. That's not what I did at all. When I started, I had no idea what I was doing. And here's the truth. As long as you stay consistent, you build labs and you execute with focus, even a half-baked plan can get you results. And I went from being completely lost to working as a network engineer, managing enterprise networks, firewalls, and data center infrastructure, and eventually building a full training program helping others do the same. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what I would do today if I were starting from zero, no experience, no degree, no connections, and wanted to land my first network engineering job as fast as possible. So the first big skill that you need in network engineering that's going to stand the test of time is going to be the networking foundations. The network engineering foundations are going to be the most important thing out of all the skills that you learn, because if you don't learn the foundations correctly, everything else is going to be extremely confusing. So number one thing is the foundation. And what I mean by the foundations is you're going to need to learn the OSI model. Yes, every single layer of the OSI model. I know you guys hate this and it's the most annoying thing, but you have to know all the OSI model layers from the physical layer all the way to the application layer. And the reason I say this is because no matter what you do in networking, I still always revert back to this. It doesn't matter how senior you are, how mid-level you are, how junior, you're still going to use the OSI model for troubleshooting, for explaining topics, and just general vernacular that we use as a network engineer. So it's very important that you understand the OSI model. The next thing you're going to have to understand is going to have to learn how to troubleshoot. And troubleshooting is going to be one of the skill sets that's going to be in your tool bed. And it's something that you're always going to do. Every network engineering position that I've done requires you to do quite a bit of troubleshooting. Most of the times networks aren't perfect. Things break, things happen, and you have to fix it. And at the end of the day, to be able to fix a network requires you to have a really good troubleshooting methodology. One of my favorite ever troubleshooting methodologies that will always stick to the test of time and has always helped me in my career, it has always been using the OSI model up. So whenever you're troubleshooting and let's say you're trying to fix a particular issue, you always start with layer one and you work your way up all the way to the uh, layer seven of the OSI model. And the reason I say this is because you can look at the physical layer, you can see what if it's that's a particular issue because at the end of the day, it's much easier to fix a layer one issue than to fix a layer seven issue. And on top of that, if layer one is the issue, layer seven is never going to work, right? So it's one of those easy things that you guys can do. And troubleshooting is a skill set that requires practice and doing tons of, of, of different types of, of troubleshooting practice. And one way you can get that troubleshooting practice, and this is the easiest way, is by either having a buddy or maybe going through some sort of program, but have someone kind of build a network and then they kind of purposely remove stuff from the network, change this IP address, um, change this protocol, shut down this port, um, do certain certain things to a sort of topology on a network, sort of like using Packet Tracer or GNS3. Once once you actually do that, and then, or once that person does that, then you go ahead and try to fix a particular issue. And that's one of the easiest ways to sort of um, get your skills up. And I've seen so even interviews where companies are now actually requiring you to do some sort of lab troubleshooting session during the actual interview. So it is something that you definitely need to learn and something that you can't just skip out on. It's something that you actually have to take the time to learn. So that's something that I would definitely recommend in terms of your learning is troubleshooting. Next thing is going to be subnetting. You're going to have to be good at subnetting. It doesn't matter if you use subnetting calculators. I've interviewed before. Um, um, for a senior network engineer position. And I was speaking with a CCIE, which is one of the highest, highest level um, certifications you can get within the Cisco world. And that person told me that he uses a subnet calculator. And that doesn't negate you from the fact of not having to learn subnetting, but it is a skill set that you still have to learn because all the time you are going to have to understand how many hosts are in a particular subnet, how many subnets are in, in this particular um, subnet mass. Like you have to know those, how many network addresses are here? What's the net, what's the broadcast address? What's the, whatever. Like you have to know those certain things to really do certain things in networking, whether it's like right, making a configuration for OSPF or creating a certain VLAN for a certain number of hosts. Like you have to have these skill sets down your back. So subnetting is definitely going to be one of those more important skills. So that pretty much wraps up the foundational skills that you pretty much need. Obviously, you have to know the, the different network protocols. You have to know all of them, but you have to know a decent amount. You have to know the different types of network devices that you're going to work with. Uh, obviously, there's core layer routers, there's layer three switches, there are access layer switches, there's fire 
AR walls, you have to just understand what they do and, and different types of, of devices on them. I would just focus on Cisco. I wouldn't focus on anything else, um, especially if you're new. But if you are want to improve your skills, I will also look into Juniper as well as Nokia and Arista because those are the very common networking devices that you may come across in, in your um, in your job potentially. So next thing is going to be cloud networking. So cloud networking is some area that I'm actually actively learning right now. So as we know, networking has now been moving to the cloud, not to say that network engineering is going away, but lots of networking can now be done on the cloud using some protocols like SD-WAN, um, using VPCs on Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services. There's multiple different things that you can do on the cloud now. And it's a skill set that you're definitely going to have to add to your tool bet as a network engineer, especially in the growing markets, because nowadays companies are expecting you to know more and adding cloud to your tool bet is really going to help a lot. Um, and just learning just the architecture of it and how to actually use it. So one thing that I would recommend is either look for a cloud provider whether it's AWS, whether it's Azure, whether it's GCP, and just play around the console. There's a free tier for all these platforms and just play around, create your own virtual private cloud, add some IP addresses in there and just start playing around with it. I've done it before. There's many courses that you can take online on Udemy. I actually actively just took one just to practice on my AWS uh, networking labs that I'm planning to do. One thing that you can actually do to build out a lab is go on ChatGPT, and this is what I'm doing actively, is to go in there, ask it to give me a simple, very simple AWS network cloud networking lab that you can have me practice on. And then you can just do that lab and it'll literally tell you what to do step by step. And then once you do it step by step, try to see how you did it and, and just keep practicing doing that. That's one of the easiest things that you can do. So definitely adding cloud to your tool bet is really going to help you a lot. All right. So number three is going to be learn network security. So nowadays before people used to think network security is more advanced level field, but it, nowadays network security is a field that you definitely need to know as a network engineer. You need to know what a DMZ is. You need to know what, what port security is and all those, those basic network security concepts, but also understanding how does IPsec work? How does VPN tunneling work? How does SSL work? How does TLS work? What are these protocols and what is the purpose of them? Because at the end of the day, hackers are getting smarter and uh, we need to, to be able to protect our data and keep our you know communication secure. And network security is a field that is growing. It is in demand and uh, it def definitely does require the expertise, obviously, in networking, but also once you learn the expertise in networking, you learning network security is going to not only be give you the best options, but also make you more prepared. So one area in networking that I would definitely recommend you learning is Palo Alto firewalls and as well as Fortinet firewalls. Those are the most common firewalls that you may come across as network engineers. So learning how to write configurations on them, how to troubleshoot them, how to work them, how to understand the GUI of them, um, and, and just learning the, the Palo Alto firewall, just general, like how it actually works. And one way that you can do this is if you do have a PC, you can get a software called uh, GNS3 or even G and get um, some Palo Alto images. And once you get those Palo Alto images, you can go ahead and actually play around with the GUI and see what sort of command you can run. Or you can actually buy a Palo Alto firewall, which I actually already have, and start playing around with it and see the topology and, and, and build out a topology with that and, and just play around with it. So that's one of the easiest ways you can get experience just from there. So skill number four is going to be network automation. So network automation, I haven't done quite a bit of this, but now it's gotten easier and easier do, to do network automation, mainly because of AI. So if you guys have ever use cursor AI or any sort of these AI uh, code editors. Now you don't even have to learn how to write code. You just have to be a really good vibe coder. And uh, pretty much what you're doing as a network automator is you're really making things quicker in the network. So there's, there's a lot of slow things that you do as a network engineer. They're like, dang, I'm doing these repetitive tasks. How can I automate this process to, to prevent human error? And there's many different platforms you can do this. You can use Ansible, you can use Puppet, you can use Chef, NetMiko. There's so many different platforms that you can do this. Python as well. There's so many options that you can do. So play around with it. This may require you to be a little bit more on the advanced side of networking, but it's still very viable for you to do this. Uh, there's many platforms that you can do this. There's one that I have on the top of my head that I, I forgot the name of, but I was using for quite some time and is quite useful. Uh, but you're definitely going to need some virtual machines and play around with this. And uh, you having this skill set is going to bring an advantage for you because one of the big selling points that you can tell about a company is when you're interviewing is letting them know like, hey, I understand NetMiko, I understand Ansible, Puppet Chef, all these platforms that I can use to automate certain tasks in the network and using that to your advantage in the interview and letting the company know that you can automate these tasks um, and save the company time and money. Right? And companies love that, especially when you're interviewing is, is, is having that business mind almost and using that um, to your advantage, especially with the skill sets that you have. So those are some of the skills when it comes to automation. So number five, and this is going to be the last one, is to think like a business owner. And you may be wondering, why do I have to think like a business owner as a network engineer? Here's the thing. Most companies that you're working for, most places that you work for are 
organizations and companies that are, their whole goal is to make profit. Okay, so if the company's goal is to make a profit, as a network engineer, you have to think with that in mind. Okay, if a company's trying to use this certain tool set over this tool set, have, think of it from that perspective because you, now you're going to have more effective communications with potentially managers or even directors. And here's the thing, when you think like a business owner, companies love that because now they think they know that you understand what the reason of the work that you're doing. Why are we, why are we using this tool instead of this tool? Why are we not taking this sort of risk over this risk? Because there's many companies that don't want to use automation for a particular reason. They don't want to use it because there is a risk of it causing a massive outage um, since you're touching, since you're letting code just touch multiple different devices on a network, so, which is a very high risk potentially, right? So having that per, uh, perspective is smart and just coming from that sort of mindset is really going to help you in terms of your career and help you actually grow and really help you eventually get into those manager, director, um, and even like, you know, even higher executive level positions because having that mindset is going to be extremely critical for you to be able to grow in this particular field. So those are the areas in networking that I recommend that are going to help you grow in 2030. Um, and that's about it. By now, you should have a clear idea of what direction to take and how to actually start building your network engineering career right away. But remember, just watching videos isn't enough. You need a real plan, structure, and accountability. That's exactly what my team and I will help you with. We've helped tons of students go from no experience to landing their first network engineering roles and even transitioning into security and cloud positions after. So if you're ready to take this seriously and want someone to guide you through a step-by-step -step process from certifications to labs to job prep, click the link in my bio and you'll see exactly how we can help you start and grow your career in tech. But thanks again so much guys for watching. If you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys uh, want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and peace.